Hello and welcome to this week's episode of It's a Sure Thing, the conscious community collective platform where we share people making a difference and businesses that are making a difference all over the world. Um, tonight we've got somebody special joining us from South Australia, but who is originally from Yorkshire, which is my side of the world. I was born in Leeds and um, this beautiful lady who will be joining us shortly was also, is also from Yorkshire. So uh, we've be, both been here for quite a long time. Anyway, less of that and more of what we're going to talk about tonight. Iridology is part of the subject that we're going to talk about tonight and the benefits of iridology. So please let your friends know, let your family know to come and join the live stream show tonight um, and hop on board and please put any comments or any questions that you've got when, uh, when we bring Sir Chain on shortly. Now, Sir Chain has got 30, over 30 years experience um, in health and well-being. She was a registered nurse working in city hospitals. And she realized that there was some short failings of um, not, not meeting the patient's needs so from the mainstream um, healthcare system. So she has learned lots and lots of different things nutrition, um, uh, wellness, um, emotional healing, as well as iridology. So without further ado, let's introduce the amazing Suchane Heap from Naturally Inspired Health. Have I got that right? Naturally Inspired Health, yeah, I'm doubting myself. Um, hi Suchane, how are you? Hey Sue, it, I am really well, thank you. And thank you for inviting me onto the show tonight. I'm really looking forward to sharing really just my passion for anything health and wellness. Well, you've been through your own personal journey as well. And so I think it's always good to, to just relate back that when somebody's actually gone through their own journey, it really integrates what you're doing because you're practicing what you're preaching as well. So that's something that you've experienced for yourself. So that's why you have a lifestyle now that you've chosen. Is that, can you tell us a little bit more about that? Yeah, so it was really interesting. So obviously working in mainstream medicine, um, I found myself in chronic pain, chronic back pain, digestive issues. And, you know, I'd been in nursing for many years. I It was an industry I trusted and I believed. And no matter how much I followed the recommendations, I, you know, took the supplements, I did the physiotherapy, I just wasn't getting where I needed to be. And I had actually started looking at alternative ways to really improve my own health, because at that point, I honestly believed that I had the potential to be in a wheelchair by the time I was 50, and I'd got two young babies it was not the life I'd signed up for. So I needed to look for alternatives. What really made the difference to me and what led me to where I am right here was when I got a phone call from a really close friend of mine to say that she'd just been diagnosed with breast cancer. By the time they'd found the cancer, it was in her pelvis, it was in her spine, it was in her liver. We were the same age, we'd got children in the same school, in the same class and this really hit home to me that no matter how much knowledge I had in the industry that I had, this wasn't going to help my friend. It wasn't no. going to help her, you know, move through her journey and to continue being there for her family and her young children. And it was that day that I walked away and decided that something needed to change. And what changed was the understanding of how the body actually works. And some of those practices that we can bring into play to actually bring the body back into balance, to support it, to do what it is designed to do naturally, which is to heal itself. Yeah. And, you know, that was a really big step out of my comfort zone, but one that just took me on a journey to really live into my passion. Wow, thank you so much for sharing that. And I, I didn't know that part of your story either. So that's um, 
it's really fascinating when something like that happens. It's a it's a wake up call, and um, good on you for being courageous enough to walk away from the familiar into something unknown and, and to, to learn everything that you've done. So um, and yeah. keep doing the great work. Stevie Young, thank you for joining us from the UK. So we've got some UK contingents. Woohoo! <laughs> I think our weather in the South Australia might be a bit worse than the UK with hailstones, but we won't talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> um, so you're a nutritionist as well. So was that one of the first things you started looking at is the actual nutrition? Because you know, that the old adage is saying of what you eat is what you are. I mean, you probably agree yeah. with that. No, it is. And look, it really is a great saying. And I will take it a little bit further than that. Mm. It's not actually what you eat is what you are. It's what your body can actually digest, which is what you are. But yeah. no, it actually wasn't my first mode of study. When I stepped away, I actually studied naturopathy. Um, and it, it was really interesting because I knew naturopathy was the way I wanted to go. But I got into about third years of my studies and realized that this wasn't actually the answer either. What I found with naturopathy was, again, it was very, it had moved from its traditional realm of um, natural therapies into more of a mainstream perspective. And I just felt there was still something missing in that industry as well. So I actually followed from there into more traditional healing and detox principles. And then from there, the functional nutrition came in. And functional nutrition is, it's a really interesting um, modality in that it isn't actually about just following nutrition advice. It's not about diets. It's actually about understanding how the body functions from a cellular level mm -hmm. and understanding that there is actually a journey that takes somebody to where they are today. So going right back from, you know, finding information in birth stories and, you know, early nutrition to, you know, experiences as a young child and a teenager, you know, things like um, sports accidents, you know, football, netball, you know, minor traumas that we quite often forget about can actually play a really big impact into signs, symptoms and diagnoses that we have in later years. And functional nutrition follows more of that principle that if we can backtrack and really do some research into experiences of life, mm. we can then use nutrition and lifestyle to bring the body back into balance when you can find and pinpoint almost that root cause, what was the trigger that yeah. initiated that journey. And more often than not, it's not the one thing. You know, we really are a multitude of experiences that are all moulded together that bring us to where we are now. Mm, absolutely. Um, and uh, Adair's actually just mentioned on there, Adair Palmer, thanks Adair. My mum was a nurse for over 50 years and still went to see a naturopath. I always wondered if she knew something others didn't, and she did. <laughs> yeah, what a great share that is. Yeah, yeah, and I think it's really um, particularly relevant now when people are, you know, taking responsibility and making choices for their own health, um, and if they can research and have the or, or have the advice from somebody like yourself that has done all of that, You've been in mainstream, you've been a nurse, then you've you've actually looked at and integrated everything because it's a holistic approach that you're coming from. It, it's we're not just talking iridology and eyes, we're talking about the whole kit and caboodle, the whole we are, approach. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we definitely are taking that holistic approach. And it's about, you know, it's about not being narrow-minded. You know, how many times have you been to a doctor and said, Oh, but I I've, I've read this and being completely dismissed because, you know, and I have to give doctors their credit, you know, they are incredibly well trained in one aspect of medicine. And I think that's what we need to remember is that they are only trained in one aspect. Yeah. And if you can find a GP who was actually trained in maybe not just mainstream medicine, but is also trained in the functional medicine and maybe integrative medicine, you'll get a bigger picture. But the person that you work with that has covered more ground mm -hmm. you're going to find that they're going to match your needs a lot better as well so it's about being open and it's about 
actually going to where your client is or where your patient is and meeting them where they are on what their perspectives of health should be and guiding them around that step to, you know, so that they can help and achieve the goals that they're looking for. Absolutely. And thank you so much for that. So let, let's talk about iridology and the benefits of iridology. Um, and I know that you've, you're coming along on Sunday to the Well Fest or the Wellness Squared um, event in Victoria Square, 7 a.m. to 5 p.m. And you've got your little machine there to take the photographs and then you can do an assessment. So you're doing some assessments on Sunday for those of you in South Australia that want to come along to Well Fest um, in Victoria Square. But let's just go back to what is iridology? How, what, what does it do? Obviously, we take a, I'll let you talk. <laughs> <laughs> right, well, thank you. Iridology is um, it's an art and a science, and it's about interpreting the, the colour and the fibre structure of the eye. So when you look at the eye and you can, you know, we've, I've got green eyes, I've got blue eyes, you know, we all know that we've got a colour eye. Um, and it's about actually examining that. Now, each fibre within the iris has a connection, by the way, of the nerve to every cell and organ within the body. So if there is a cell or an organ within the body that is out of balance in any way, then that nerve communication travels up to the eye and it reflects in there. So by looking at the eyes, we can have a look at what's going on, not just currently, but also what's going on genetically. So the iris, which is the colored part of the eye, tends to have a story of constitution. This is made up of three generations past, so your parents, grandparents, and great-grandparents. And you can find a lot about how grandma and granddad lived because what will happen is they will imprint a story and a message in your eye that usually indicates that there is a potential for maybe a weakness within a particular organ. With this information, we can choose the lifestyle that we want to live in order to help support that nurture point. When we look at the sclera, which is the whites of the eyes, this is a reflection of where inflammation is within the body because it's it's taking information from the cells and the lymphatic fluid and allows us to know currently what's going on with you right now. So we can't blame the generations and our ancestors for that information. This is how you're living your life on a daily basis and the impact it's having. With this information, we can actually tailor some recommendations for how you know, it would be more advisable to live lifestyle and nutrition choices. Fabulous. That's that, that's just blown my mind a bit. That's in, incredible, like the three generational stuff. Um, and yes. the inference. That's that's amazing. I've got a question from Adair. Does illness make your irises change? Good question. Thank you, Adair. Yeah, thank you, Adair. So it's not so much that illness will make the eye change, but if there is an imbalance within the body, you will see a change within the iris. So, or you will see it, you'll see more of an immediate change within the sclera that's in the whites of the eyes. Um, yeah. And you will find that uh, over time that that imprint will come within the iris as well. Okay. And, and somebody, somebody said to me years ago, I used to have like a, a kind of a yellowy color around on, on the whites. And I reckon that was induced by alcohol a long time ago. I, don't drink alcohol anymore but back then what what is that what, what would that be do you know yeah. so it can very likely be if there is an imbalance within the liver that will show up in the eye so there are some quite um standard markings that we can see so you know when you've got those really strong red lines in the um whites of the eyes yeah depending where they're positioned and we, we kind of use a map and that map will tell us which particular organs they are. So say if it's an imbalance within the thyroid, maybe it's a hormonal imbalance within the thyroid, there'll be a very clear mark in that particular zone that right. would indicate and point us into that direction. And then we can go do some further investigation. So instead of trying to guess what signs and symptoms are that you're experiencing, you can actually just look within the eyes and go, ah, I can pinpoint the organ. And then we can go back to that functional nutrition approach, which is to do the questioning. Let's have a look what went on through life. 
Yeah. Was there a trauma? You know, was there an emotional element? Was there, you know, nutritional lifestyle choices that are leading to the imbalance within that organ? Yeah. Beautiful. Love it. It's, it's just so thorough and intense. So, so when somebody comes to have a session with you, I'll just actually say Steve, Steve is, Steve is popped in and said, absolutely appreciate helping people, people helping healing. Uh, Beck, just come online. Hi, Beck. She said, sorry, she's late. That's okay. You can watch the replay. <laughs> yes, so if you're watching from inside of Enlightened Tribe community, making a difference inside the group, please give Be Life permission to show your name. So she's put that in the comments. Otherwise, your name doesn't come up and we can't acknowledge who you are. So there's the little things um, to talk about and just to, to, to keep us on track. So, so with regards to someone coming to have a consult from you, I know you've got a whole program, um, like a coaching program, because you love coaching people as well and, and guiding them and supporting them all the way through. So can you tell us a bit more about your, your whole program, please? Yeah, so, you know, really the starting point of any health journey has got to be about understanding what's actually going on. And that's what the health assessment does. So, you know, as we've talked about already, we you know we're looking at that functional nutrition approach. It's that counselling. It's about extracting the information. Yeah. We're using iridology so we can pinpoint what areas within the body are out of balance. And with that information, I can use that to personalise a program. You know, we're all unique. We've all travelled different stories. So when you're working with somebody, you need somebody who's not going to follow a standalone program where everybody follows the same steps but somebody who can put something together that takes your individuality and works with you on there so normally a coaching program would be a 12-week program it follows three stages the first stage is the most important it's the one that cannot be missed this is the one that i found when i was working as a nurse and especially in chronic disease management this is what was missed but look at those key foundations to what health is Hydration, nutrition, movement, sleep, awareness of your environment and that daily practice to build resilience to everyday stressors. Mm -hmm. So the first part of the program is about looking at what your nutritional needs are, because your nutritional needs are likely to be a lot different than what somebody else's are. Yep. When we use biochemical analysis, which is a urine and a saliva sample, which can be done very easily just in the clinic. We don't need a lab for that. That can really highlight what nutrients you're actually lacking and where you need to be building more um, of a tailored program. Uh, that's where a lot of the individualized um, nutrition advice comes from. Yeah. From there, I'm also a detox and um, fasting specialist. So many of my clients, although feel quite excited, but also a little bit apprehensive, detoxing and cleansing and fasting are an incredibly powerful way to bring the body back to balance and yeah. to do it incredibly quick in order to do that safely if you've ever tried to give anything up or you've tried to fast by yourself and you've had detox symptoms it's likely because you missed the first stage yeah. you missed the hydration the nutrition the movement the sleep the awareness the daily practice once we master those and we move to the detox, it usually is a very enlightening experience that will actually shift your healing journey so far forward that by the time you've got to six to eight weeks on a program, you usually you're struggling to remember how bad you felt when you started the program. Oh, I, I can only imagine I did a six day detox retreat in Byron Bay in May and, it, and I fasted and I was already preparing because I, I quite eat healthy and all the rest of it it was all kind of i don't drink coffee don't drink alcohol anything like that i haven't done that for many years um, and those six days were life-changing so i can only imagine what it'd be like an eight-week program like it would be whew, through the roof it'd be fantastic yeah perhaps that's something that i should consider doing <laughs> one of the beauties of doing the detox as part of the one-on-one -on -one coaching program is we would all like to go, especially now, I'm pretty sure we would all like to go away and go off to a retreat somewhere. 
But what happens when you get back home and you're trying to incorporate these new principles in as a lifestyle for something that you're going to continue doing, yeah. you know, ongoing, it's nice to be able to do the cleansing, the fasting, make those lifestyle changes in the real environment where you live because, you know, you need to know how you're going to go to work and, you know, am I going to get the hydration in? And, you know, being an emergency surgical nurse, I only know too well what it's like going into a shift, scrubbing up for an operation and being stood there for eight hours. Yeah. You know, I certainly can't have a drink because then I'm going to need to wee and you can't go for a week because you're in the middle of an operation. So, oh, God. you know, being able to find a way whilst you're working with a coach to help you problem solve all these things. Well, what can we do in these situations in these real life? Yeah, your real life situation so that you can master those skills and this new lifestyle ongoing. Mm. Awesome. Yeah, I, I, I agree. I can see the benefits in, in all of that. So thank you. Um, I'm just going to go back to the comments here. Stevie has asked, does inflammatory illness when organ like skin show CPTSD, CRPS, PCOS, uh, I don't even know what those mean. <laughs> I've got, I've got you there, Sue. So that's perfectly fine. <laughs> um, Stevie, thank you for that question. Absolutely. So the one thing to remember is that when we're using iridology as that assessment tool, we do not use it to diagnose illness. So you know, your medical practitioner is the only one legally that's allowed to diagnose. So. Yeah. I would never be able to diagnose fibromyalgia. I can um, diagnose polycystic ovary disease. But what I can do is I can highlight whether there is an imbalance perhaps in the ovaries. And then when we bring in that functional nutrition approach where we're asking the right questions and looking through lifestyle, we can actually identify and go, okay, your symptoms, your um eyes are indicating that the ovaries are out of balance and we can actually come up with a plan to bring them into balance we don't need that name we don't need that diagnosis of polycystic ovaries what we need to know is that we need to put nutrients into the body so the body can heal the imbalance that's happening with the ovaries or which is happening you know fibromyalgia we're looking at autoimmune conditions um yeah. I was really blessed. I When I look back, I'm really blessed. My journey with digestive issues and chronic pain in my back took me to already making those changes for better health and, induced, and reducing the inflammation. So a few years ago when I was diagnosed with autoimmune condition, I was very fortunate that I never took that autoimmune to that severe um, debilitating stage, which quite often people with fibromyalgia and lupus actually are. So I'm a testament to know that if you do make those lifestyle changes that are identified within the iridology and in your functional nutrition assessment, that you can reverse that inflammation that could be leading to those diagnosed conditions that you mentioned. Yeah. Yeah. And, and reversing, reversing your age, reversing your vitality, reversing, it doesn't matter what age you are, you can start now. Don't keep putting it off and putting it off because I, well, that's my belief anyway, and yeah. I'm sticking with it. <laughs> you are absolutely right. You know, I work with, you know, women and men, you know, well into retirement age, you know, I don't have an age limit with the people that I work with, but I have worked with people in the, in the late seventies who have gone, you know what? I actually, I've got grandchildren. I want to be flexible. I want to be able to go and play. And I want, can we do something, you know, so that we can get rid of the inflammation? You know, one of my one of my clients a couple of years ago, you know, was a retired lady with grandchildren who didn't want the rheumatoid arthritis spoiling her plans. Yeah. And, you know, we worked through, and again, I specialize in nutrition and lifestyle to the point where she was able to come off all, um, room you know rheumatoid arthritis medication so that was the methotrexate that she was having the infusions and she came off all of those was pain-free and flexible so she could enjoy those later years with her grandchildren and that's a great story thank you for sharing that 
And now Beck Norton has just asked a question. How does, and I believe I pronounced iridology incorrectly because you said iridology. So how do we're both from the same side of the world? So I don't know how we're getting that wrong. Oh, is it Rundle Wall or Rundle Mount? No, we don't have time for that. <laughs> okay. Um, how does iridology help with mental illness? Good question, Beck. Thank you. So iridology, again, it's about identifying areas that are out of balance. Now, more often than not, if you're going to a doctor with um, mental illness or issues in that area, they're only going to look at that one area. Whereas iridology might identify other organs and systems that you've not even thought about. Maybe the liver is out of balance. Maybe the digestive system's out of balance. And those are the things that we will, you know, we can highlight as being the actual root cause to why mental health issues are happening. So iridology really helps in identifying those triggers and those root causes for the symptoms that you're facing. At the end of the day, iridology is just a really good tool for assessing. Yeah. It's the recommendations that follow on from there. So the nutrition and the lifestyle recommendations that will actually help then with bringing some balance in and overcoming those mental health issues. It, well, it's a great start, isn't it? You, you come and get a total overhaul just by looking at your eyes and, and not just in the present moment, but on everything ancestral wise that you might need to look at and clear and, you know, not eat yeah. or, or whatever. So that's, that's it's been fascinating. I can't believe our time is nearly up already. Like it just know, like two minutes. <laughs> It, it, it's quite dangerous asking me questions about health because I'm like, okay, where can I start? <laughs> oh, look, it's fantastic. And for those of you in South Australia, as I said, please come along to Wellfest and, and Wellness Squared in the city because you can see um, Suchane there on Sunday. I'll be there too and a few other people. Can I share, um, Sue, that I'm actually running a special? So yes, you just do manage, yeah, if you do manage to get down to the city, Victoria Square, oh, it's beautiful, is Victoria Square. So you'll find me set up there. I'll have the camera with me. Um, all I'll be doing on the day is actually taking the eye photographs and I'll arrange for a different time where it's private and personal to go into that history. Um, but if you do get to come down, I'll be offering the health assessments, including the iridology, the biochemical analysis. They're going to be complementary and your health assessment is going to be reduced to $125 instead of the $149. Brilliant. Okay, thank you. And you are you operate from McLaren Vale. You've got a um, I do consultation place at McLaren Vale, and people can get hold of you on your Facebook page, on your website, um, and this uh, and also from SueShaw.com.au on the Enlightened Tribe directory, which is our global wellness directory. So all those places they can get hold of you. Amazing. Yes, yeah, so thank you very much, everybody. Um, a special offer between now and the 1st of November. If you want to book in and come into clinic, I've got a special offer for all of the guests on tonight's show. So I've yeah. left that open for you and you can book anytime throughout November. And would that include people who are do watching the replay as well? Anybody watching the replay? So there is a special booking link for It's a Sure Thing. You'll find that in the link in the comments. You can, as long as you jump on any time between now and the 1st of November, you can schedule a session with me right through till December. Beautiful. Thank you so much, Sachin. It's been an absolute pleasure. I've learned so much from you today and I hope everybody listening has learned as well. And thank you so much for joining us from the UK, Stevie. Um, and everybody else who's come on board, have a great night and or great morning. <laughs> and thank you. Take care. See you next thank week. Thank you, everybody. Good night.